Welcome to Bunnyfish Crafts. I'm your host, Heather, known as Bunnyfish on Ravelry, Plurk, Instagram, and YouTube. Today is Monday, the 6th of January, 2014. And this is episode 60, Peer Pressure. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. This week, cute, cute things happened. We went to the Festival of Lights, which is the zoo just lit up at night. And some of the exhibits are open. A lot of them are closed because it's cold and the animals are in their houses and stuff, but it was awesome because Mara sang Jingle Bells for the first time. They were playing it with a display of snowmen who lit up in time to the song, and as we were walking away, she started singing Jingle Bells. Heart melting. The other heart melting thing was that Friday or something, I walked down the hallway and happened to glance into Mara's room because Gabriel was singing the ABCs. I was like, hmm, interesting. He was singing the ABCs to Mara, and she was wrapped up in a blanket on his lap, and then when he finished singing the alphabet, he said, are you sleepy, baby? Because I rock Mara and sing the ABCs to her at bedtime. <sighs> so adorable. So the sweater knit along ended. I closed it. And there were only two sweaters entered, so both people are going to get a prize. And that prize is a Ravelry pattern, $7 or less, that's giftable. So Hazel and Shayna, who is Bukos, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, get in contact with me, let me know what pattern you would like, and thank you for participating in the sweater knit along. Thank you everybody who participated. I know other people participated and just weren't able to finish. But thank you for joining along. I am going to have another knit along in February and March. I would like to knit patterns from Knitty. Knitty is a free online magazine and they have all sorts of things um, socks, sweaters, hats, arm warmers, pretty much anything you could think of. I'm sure you could find a pattern for it. So we'll be knitting that. I will allow works in progress from Knitty Patterns to be submitted for prizes, but you have to finish um, at least 50% of the project in the knit along time. So, I mean, I guess if you wanted to start a knitty sock now and not do the second one until the beginning of February, that would that would be legal in this contest. And there will be at least one prize, which will be a pattern up to $8, or you get to choose your prize, or I will make you a project using 100 grams of sock yarn. So socks, shallot, arm warmers, hat, but yeah, you get to choose. I can make something for you or you can have a pattern. And that will be coming up in February. I didn't finish anything this week. Shocker! It's been a while since that happened. But I finished a lot of things in November and December. So instead of working on um, works in progress from before January, as soon as the ball dropped, I cast on all new things. The first thing I'm actually working on as I'm talking to you, because I knew that there was going to be a few minutes of chatter at the beginning, is this. Awkward to show because it's a blanket, but I'm doing my best. So this is... Rainbow Ripple Baby Blanket by Celeste Young. I am using this super bright variegated yarn that I received from my best friend Becca's mom one year for Christmas when she sent the kids Christmas presents. She also sent me this yarn. So awesome, right? I have used up one skein so far, I'm about halfway, I would guess halfway through the second skein, and there are five skeins total. I don't know how big I should make this. It's for a baby, but 
I'm still trying to decide if I want it to be like a um, a car seat blanket or something bigger that they can carry around when they're a toddler. I don't know. What are your thoughts? I know it's super bright. So I have like three blankets, baby blankets, lots in my stash and I just wanted to use what I had instead of buying new stuff and I think this is really fun it's a little possibly a little less obnoxious than what you're seeing but it is pretty bright yeah it's I don't know it's not quite that bright it's definitely baby appropriate but it's definitely like bright baby stuff is pastel neon a thing because that's kind of what it is Oh, and I am doing a white stripe. This is Hepple White. Um, that's the colorway, and it's Lion Brand Homespun, which is not in the pattern. My sister started a baby blanket while she was here because we went to knitting group, and um, did I was I talking about this last week? Because I feel like I was talking about this last week. Maybe not. Maybe not here. I recorded an episode with Haley, Lisa, from um, Knit Two Together podcast, Josh from Sort of a Knitter, and Fiona from A Down Under Yarn. We recorded together, and Haley and Lisa posted it. So maybe I'm just thinking that I that I was talking about it there because we recorded on the first after I had started this. My sister started a blanket while she was here, and she said, you know, it was going to be from both of us, and she picked out the yarn and said it was like a rainbow in clouds. Well, I couldn't get my stitch gauge to match hers because she was just doing a rectangle back and forth, and I didn't want the first few rows to not match the rest of the blanket, so I ripped it out, which was totally fine with her. As she was leaving, she was like, you can rip it out if you want, whatever, but... She totally has credit for the rainbow in the clouds, which is why I'm using the white. And I'm going to put in a white um, white stripe every so many rounds and then do a white border. That is my plan for this. And I'm working this on a USI 9 5.5 millimeter hook. I didn't even look at the yarn, um, not yarn, the hook recommendation for the pattern. Honestly, I kind of just went with the idea of the pattern. I read the first, I don't know, first, I'm going to count, one, two, three, four, five rounds. No, maybe not five, maybe only four um, rounds of the pattern and followed those. And then I was just like, well, I kind of see where this is going and decided to go off on my own way. So maybe this is like the pattern and maybe it's not. I do know that the pattern has you actually change color to make the rainbow, whereas I'm using just a bright variegated yarn. I also started a pair of socks on the first, and this is them. It's a design, so shoot, design. I am past where normally you would stop your socks, but I want to make knee highs or as close to knee highs as I can get. I'm using 716 Knit, 716 Sock, in uh, Dr. Laura for the Deceased. Wow, brain freeze today. It was the yarn, is the yarn, that Lisa bought for me from Jenna. Custom colorway. Super gorgeous! I'm in love with these socks. I tried them on already. They fit perfectly. I am into the calf increases of that sock and look for that design to be published mid-February. US size 1, 2.25 millimeter needles. A few days ago, I started some socks for Hazel. We are doing a trade. 
um, a few pairs of socks for a sweater. I totally think that's a fair trade, especially because she has small feet and likes her socks short. So this is how long I'm making the leg. I've actually just started the heel just a little tiny bit. I'm four rows into the heel. So these socks will definitely be done next week. I'll definitely have one finished object, probably two. This is using O Loops in the Barbie, Barbie Zambinista colorway and their oloops.etsy.com. I super love the way this color is working up. It's super bright. Okay, so really I cast all the things on because they were super bright and I just didn't want to pick up the gray projects that I had left over from pre-New Year's. So, super bright, totally loving it. This is appropriate pink in case anyone's wondering. There's like a dark reddish pink and then a lighter pink and oh, it's beautiful with the electric blue. And I started one other project which is the Moody sweater. Provisional cast on, which is what the chow goo needles are holding for the neck piece. You go back and knit the collar. And then here is, this is the, this is the right side of the sweater. I'm not very far into it, but I like it a lot. However, it is this dark green color, which is gorgeous. It's Knit Picks, Wool of the Andes in Sequoia Heather, Wool of the Andes Tweed. It's beautiful, but it's kind of dark, and I'm just really not feeling dark colors. It will be done by the end of the month. I It is on my list. I'm going to finish it. But, you know, it's um I only work a few rows on it a day. I'm sure when it gets closer to the end, I will start. I'll get the, oh my gosh, I'm so close. Let me just finish this. But right now I'm like, oh, okay. Did I tell you who that was by? I know I said Moody, but I don't think that I said that it was by um, Elena Nodell. And also, I don't even think I told you the pattern for these socks. These are the Monkey Socks by Cookie A, which you'll be able to see next week when I actually have more of it. I'm still spinning the Faux Angora. I got into a little bit of the black section, but just a very little bit, so you can't even really see it. And I'm still spinning the brown lace that I got the two bats from Lorraine. I'm almost done with the first bat. I will be done with the first bat next week. So I'll show you the first single next week. <sighs> New things. As I told you last week, I got a lot around um, Christmas time. So I'm going to show you the second half of that. First, I'm going to show you fiber from Josh. So last week was the gifts for me. And this week, it is fiber that I am going to spin into two-ply fingering weight yarn and send back to him, or probably give to him. Realistically, I'm probably just going to give it to him at ZK unless he's like, no, I need it now. So this is from Her Chance to Knit, and the colorway is that odd color in the sky before the storm. It's Superwash Merino, 4.1 ounces, and I believe it's pencil roving, but I might be making that up. He bought this on Etsy, and he was like, oh, it's so pretty. And I was like, you should send it to me to spin to you. And he got it sent to himself, and now it came here. Really, Josh should just listen when I say, hey, that's for me. Well, it's for me to spin, but he gets to keep it at the end. This is from Two Sisters Stringworks. It's 100% Jacob. Super pretty. This is also from Two Sisters Stringworks, and this is Gotland Wool. And this is probably what I'm going to spin first, I'm thinking. I've never spun Jacob or Gotland, but I think I'm going to spin Gotland first, and I think I might try to do it for the Ravelinic games, depending on what their rules are for spinning. Because last time I checked, which was last night, they didn't have the, um, the events listed 
they could be listed now, I just haven't seen them. And then the last one is from Tailored Fibers. The colorway is Forest and it's four ounces. Did I tell you that the two sisters fibers were both 110 grams? Because that's what they are. So this is Forest. All very pretty yarns. I like them a lot. So fibers, not yarns. So I look forward to spinning those. The next two things are prizes that I won. Leslie, who is Pixie Knits and has the, oh, the Knitting Game podcast, had a little contest on her podcast. Um, to, she, she had a contest six weeks. Ca Captain Tight Pants was the winner. And then she said, well, what pattern should I make? And whoever suggests the winning pattern will win a prize. I recommended the Zipper Lexicon sock by Kirsten Hall, which if you've been watching, you know that I love. And that pattern won. So she gave me the option of picking a lace weight yarn or some fiber to spin. And I went with the fiber option. This is from the Painted Tiger. It is 75% BFL, 25% Tessa Silk, about three ounces, and it is called Eventide. It's purple and yellow with like a grayish, grayish section and a rosy section. I'm really, really looking forward to spinning this, but obviously not until I finish Josh's fiber because, you know, I feel like I should. And she also sent this adorable card because it was right around Christmas time. Isn't that funny? The second prize that I won was for the Knits and Things podcast, the, um, Diabetes Awareness Month knit along where I knit the blue sweater. I knit a lot of things that were blue or worked on a lot of things that were blue. But I finished the blue sweater and that is the entry that won. So she also sent this adorable Christmas card. And I won Bleeding Man Fiber Arts in the Deep Sea colorway. This is the Showstopper base. It's 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, fingering weight. And I have some thoughts brewing for this, but I haven't made a decision for sure. So, beautiful. Thank you, Leslie and Heather, for having contests so that I could win. Also, I received from Lorraine, the woman in my knitting group who has Sable. I was talking to her about wanting to make a sweater for Gabriel, and then I ordered the yarn, and Gabriel didn't like the yarn that I ordered. She was like, well, I probably have something that will work for a sweater for him. And she said that she thought she had four skeins of Lion Brand Wool Ease in the sport weight. And I was like, oh yeah, that'll work just fine. Well, she does. She did. She had four skeins, but they were in two different colorways. But they coordinate quite well. So this one is Blueberry Twist. And it's got lighter blues in there. And this other one is Denim Twist. So I'll be using these together in a sweater. I'm not going to make the um, the Gramps cardigan using it because I think that would just be too much going on at once. I'll just make the Gramps cardigan for Mara instead using the yarn that I originally bought for Gabriel, but whatever. So I have this yarn. I am thinking the, um, the Baby Sophisticate sweater for Gabriel because it's just pretty simple and then I can play with striping or something with this yarn. And then I got a package from Jenna of 716 Knit because we began together and she was talking about wanting a dragon 
um, a crocheted dragon doll. It's, I think it's called Dirk. I don't know. Keep watching the podcast because I'm going to be making it around the end of the month, beginning of February. But she wants it. It's a crocheted pattern. She doesn't crochet. She already spins and knits and dyes. She said she didn't want to take up another craft because she's already full and she works full time. But she sent me some yarn. So these are the um, 716 knit 716 sock base. This one is bare, which will be for the face and hands. It's a it's a doll that is dressed up as a dinosaur. I don't know if I made that distinction. This is, um, everyone wants petrified hamsters and they're never happy with them. It's something like that. That could be wrong, but it's similar to that. And that's going to be the main body. And then there's some details that will be done in this super neon green. And the dragon has wings, so she sent me some of her hand spun. It's white and sparkly. Can you, oh, I think you can see some of the sparkles. So I'll be making that dragon and that is super exciting. And um, when your indie dyer friend says, hey, I will dye up some yarn if you'll crochet this for me and you can have the extra, of course you say yes. So I did say yes. I'm still reading Allegiant. It's going very well. I need to finish it in the next few days because it is due back at the library on the 9th. So I have myself on a schedule of how many pages I need to read during the day instead of, you know, watching a podcast. It's going to be easy. I only have like 200 pages to go. I could read that in a day if I really wanted to. Okay, so New Year's resolutions. Last week, I said that I wasn't going to do them. And then on the first, we recorded that podcast, the five of us podcasters. And everybody was like, oh, well, we're going to talk about New Year's resolutions, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll make some resolutions. I had actually started making resolutions the night before at midnight on New Year's Eve. Well, New Year's Day, you know, that the transition time. I started thinking about them and I wrote down a couple. And then for the podcast, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to make these finalized. So now I have New Year's resolutions. Didn't think I was going to do them. And then I got peer pressured into it. So I have four. Number one is to make a steaked project. And I already have that written down on my list of things to do, the crafty list that I showed you last week. And I plan to make that in October because I'm going to make the Frankenstieg socks. I didn't write down the pattern designer. But the idea is that five people could make a pair of socks at one time because you steak separate parts of the sock and then put them together. I haven't read the pattern yet, but I'm pretty excited about that. I haven't decided what yarn I'm going to use either. I'm just going to wait and figure that out then. <laughs> Number two is I want to finish my sock yarn blanket. I am a little less than halfway done. And I'll show you the progress that I made this week. This big square, which is leftovers of three small squares from the minis that I got from Jenna. This is all yarn from 716 Knit. So if you haven't stocked her her updates um, and you like these colors, you should maybe do that. Everything that has a stitch marker is what I did this week. I did 13 squares because big squares count as four. because that's what I wanted to work on. I wanted to work on things for me. So here are all 13 squares. So if I do a square a day, I will be really close. My third goal is to end the year with 10 or less project lots of yarn, nice yarn that was stashed before 2014. That picture that you were just looking at is 
all of what I consider to be my nice yarn. And you might have been able to see that there are a couple projects that were started, so those will still count toward the finishing because the yarn was dashed before 2014. Um, there are, I believe, 86 projects worth of yarn or lots of yarn, um, counting 100 grams of fingering weight as a single project. So I could make shawls that take, you know, 800 yards of fingering weight and knock out two lots in one project, which I'm sure will happen. But that was just to give me an idea of how much yarn I actually have that I want to get through. And I don't have to use all of it. I could de-stash some of it. But I just don't want to have yarn sitting around in my stash for forever because I'm sure everybody knows um, everybody who has a stash. Some people don't stash yarn, which is totally cool. You do your crafting your way. But for people who do have stashes of yarn, sometimes you get things and you're in love with it right then, but the longer it sits, the less in love with it you are. I just don't want anything to sit around long enough for me to not love it. Does that make sense? The last goal that I have is a sewing goal, and it is to finish a quilt that I started for my boyfriend for Christmas 2012. Yeah, I don't think I worked on it at all last year, but I think that I have a picture of it somewhere, so I'll put that up um, here while I'm talking if I can find it. I have about half of the top pieced together and I have all of the blocks put together. I just need to do the sashing between the blocks and put that all together and then I think it's called sashing. I don't know. I'm really, really amateur when it comes to quilting. I have about half of the top pieced together and I have all of the blocks put together. I just need to do the sashing between the blocks and put that all together, and then I think it's called sashing. I don't know. I'm really, really amateur when it comes to quilting. I've made two quilts, three. I've made three quilts, um, but they were all improvised patterns, and they all had hand embroidery on them. Um, I made one for my mom and one for Becca's mom, and those had things like kids, their children's birthdays and grandchildren's birthdays and things like that. Um, my mom's had our nicknames embroidered on them. I made a quilt for Marilee, which had all sorts of memory things. It has our nicknames for each other, bands that we really like or liked. Just random things like that. So this is the first non-scrapbooky type quilt, I guess. And I can't remember the pattern. I don't remember the book. I read it in a book from the library. Um, I think it was a Jelly Roll pattern book, but I couldn't tell you. I could probably find it if I searched really hard, but I just, I'm not going to. So I really want to finish that by the end of the year because I did tell him that I was going to have it finished 2012. But if I give it to him for Christmas this year, that will be good enough and he will just have to deal with it. It's not like he's making me a quilt. What crazy things are you planning on doing this year? Are your resolutions kind of go big or go home or are they a little more realistic than mine? Not that I think that I can't do these. I think I can. I just, it is the beginning of the year. We're six days in and looking at that, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so much to do. I hope you made something fantastic with your sticks and string and I hope to see you next week. Bye.